Hello and welcome to Bardscraft. Here we have the most ridiculous thing that will turn into an epic Dark Mages Tower. In this video I have something special for you. I'm gonna make all of the bricks and tiles from oats um, cardstock. Okay, we begin from the start. I had no good basing material, so I just took some of this OSB board. Now I have a good base. Sitting comfortably in my new improved workspace, I started shaping the XPS foam into a stony hill. I made the usual rough textures by ripping away chunks using the knife. After a while, it looked like this. Good. Plenty of PVA glue will keep these in place. I continued by building the castle tower from cardboard. Okay, that's ridiculously large. Or perhaps it's not. This is gonna be a big one. Well, this is easy now, but I'll definitely regret this when we start making bricks and such. I hot glued together a beautiful beginning for our tower thingy. I have no idea where to store this. I continued by building these protruding rooms from cardboard. Naturally, this is a ruined tower, so I made sure to have most of the walls blown away. The idea of this build is to make as little sense as possible and to look good. All of these rooms and platforms will be great spots to have miniatures. On this side I decided to cut a large hole into the wall and then glued a floor in place. A bit tricky, but that should do. I also cut a magnificent door leading to one of these collapsed rooms. Next I built the most ridiculous part of the castle. This perfectly demonstrates how hilariously beautiful towers wizards could build before the benevolent king started imposing restrictions. Seriously though, this would collapse instantly, but it looks quite cool. After gluing on the top floor, I continued building the remaining framework of the roofs from craft sticks. I made sure to leave enough room for line of sight and placing of miniatures. The idea of this nonsense is to later glue on a bit of shingles to get that collapsed roof look. Hmm, do we need an entrance? No, I don't want to make one. For a mage who probably doesn't even leave his tower, this is called a safety measure. I simply made a ruined stone pathway. Looks okay, but we need more damage. After the cut, I covered the gap with egg carton. And this is supposed to be a chunk of broken stone, don't ask. Next I did my overnight oats and used the cardstock to make brickwork. We need lots of pieces, varying in size and shape. Since you might be interested, I decided to count the bricks. One, two, three, twelve. That's like sixty. 120, 200, here more bricks were needed, now we're at 400, 550, I'm just carelessly throwing these on to get this done in a reasonable time. If something looks bad, no problem, I'll cover it later with some kind of a texture paste, I'll have to figure that out. Okay, 
Now that's about 800 cardstock bricks. I decided to only partially cover the inner wall with bricks. Then I made slightly smaller tiles to put on the floors. Yeah, we're slowly getting there. I also placed some bits on the collapsed walkway. I glued them on messily and then cut off the excess. Okay, I made the pavement and continued by building a road that leads us somewhere. Where does it lead? Hmm, I think I know. It is now time to cut to the sponsor of this video. Lord Caleb of Krakenship Miniatures is now launching a Kickstarter where you have the opportunity to get any of these peculiar miniatures. Look at these elementally touched figures, centaurs, elephant folk and hilarious bird people. <laughs> Krakenship's Miniatures is a small indie company that specializes in making unique figures that are hard to find or perhaps don't even exist in the market. And at a good price. By joining the Kickstarter you'll receive sets of 4 miniatures at a discount depending on your pledge. You can also go check out this concept art for the stretch goals of the campaign or explore these characters from Krakenship's first successful Kickstarter. Lots of interesting work here. Yeah, use the link down below and tell Caleb that Bardscraft sent you and you'll get a free bonus miniature if you decide to pledge and make this project come to life. Thanks to Krakenship's Miniatures for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to swordplay. Yeah! Another delicate cut should do wonders. Um, yeah, well, now that's definitely a ruined castle. I reattached the top in an interesting position, now all is wibbly wobbly and beautiful. This one room is almost falling off, looks good, so I attached it a bit better, just like that. If you think this was dumb, please subscribe if you're new here, so I know if I'll start using the sword more often to make details and such. I'll actually put a petition in the comments right now to change my patrons names from my crafting knife to my sword. If it passes, I'll have to use the sword in every video. <laughs> okay, after cutting away excess from some tiles, I made epic fantasy crystals. Since I've already mastered the way of wooden crystals, as shown in this video, I decided to create them from cardstock. I simply folded these cutouts and secured them with PVA glue. This isn't exactly what I had planned, but it looks good. Well, I didn't even have a plan. That's my crafting secret. I don't think much. I do. Try that sometimes. If you are good at something, your victory might manifest itself without the need of overthinking. As I reach higher heights of purity and excellence, I know that more and more beauty will come out of my barbaric flow of action. As if I was consistently lucky. You too can cultivate this power through consistent self-mastery, positive action by never blaming, never complaining, and always taking responsibility. You might find higher levels of life and freedom that you never thought existed. Good luck. Next I glued a few bricks on strategic spots to improve mini placement. I also made a few very simple doors from craft sticks. They won't be that visible, but I figured it's worth it. Now we need to cover up stuff with a stone texture-ish paste. I made a test batch using plenty of baking soda, PVA glue and sand. I mixed thoroughly and tried it on the unbricked portion of the wall. Hmm. Looks and feels promising. It's definitely easier and more dumb to apply by hand. With this I should be able to cover all cardboard edges nicely. Wherever the bricks look a bit boring, we can add texture paste. Gives a more natural, ruined look. Any visible hot glue mess is also easy to hide under this. Yeah, I should probably use gloves. 
It seems to work very well. It's durable and rough after drying. The second batch was enough to get all of the inner walls and sections of the floors covered. Surprisingly, the brush worked a bit better. I also applied a bit more on the outer walls. Should look nicer. Next I chopped up some pine bark. This always works wonders for the textures on the ground. I covered all of the ground and made sure to smoothen the transition between castle and ground. I let all of this dry and then continued by finishing the roof. Shingles. In order to make the shingles stand out from the bricks, I cut them triangular. To further enhance the ruined look, these are glued on quite randomly over some of what remains of the roof structures. The sharp shape kind of gives the castle an unwelcoming mood, just what I was accidentally going for. I added a few larger cardstock bits to create larger portions of broken roof. Now this looks quite good, but I think we can improve it by making some junk that has fallen off the roof. I simply glued this inside the rooms and down here. Then, to finish that, I glued on a few fallen shingles. One last thing before painting. More stone textures in the foam. I used the sacred ball of aluminum foil. Next I went out to pollute the beautiful spring weather. I first sprayed all with black. I had to be careful with the foam. It melts from such a cheap spray. Also careful not to step in poop. Then I took a brown and painted the ground and tried to lightly touch the textured areas and roof structures. While that dried, I painted a pretty neat tiefling mage I designed on the Eldritch Foundry. Since I wasn't falling behind in my non-existent schedule, I was able to paint the miniature a bit better than usual. Remember, better does not necessarily equal good. After a way too long time, our dark mage of the castle is complete. The colors work quite well. Here are all the paints I used. Now on to painting the mage's castle. A grey dry brush over the entire thing should be a good start. I left the shingles untouched. The bricks and textures take the paint well, especially if I have a truly dry brush. Next I brushed the shingles with a dark red. As you can see, I'm not specifically aiming at the shingles. It's okay to get some of the red around. After that, I dry brushed almost everything again, but with a tan. Here, my brush hadn't dried completely, so I got some streaks of paint. Not good. By the way, I have to do this quick paint job, because this is so large and I have other things to do as well. Luckily, this is supposed to be a dark castle, so I can keep the colors to a minimum. Now we can paint the crystals with purple. Should be easy to brush the edges with increasingly vibrant colors. Being just messy enough results in a subtle glow effect. Actually, I went ahead and made more of these light effects all around. Perhaps the light gives a hint of the magic in this castle. Very nice. I dry brushed the crystals with pink and highlighted the edges with pink again. Enough brushing, next we have some oil washes. I made a green and black wash. I'll leave the brown tones for the dust pigments I'll use soon. I applied the washes a bit everywhere. Something is too bright, add wash. Inner corners, add wash. You don't quite know. Add wash. I applied more of the green wash on the texture paste, on the floors and the ground. This is messy. I put it out in the fresh wind to dry completely. 
I also made sure to get rid of the fumes inside. I had almost forgotten one detail. Hangy corpse cages. I made these cages out of barbecue sticks and matches. I didn't have any corpses at hand or skeletons, but I think these will still do the trick. I painted the wood with black, dry brushed with gunmetal, and then took in the castle and attached the cages with dark steel wire. I twisted the wire and made it thicker. Looks good. Super glue. I also brushed the cages with purple. And why not the cables as well? Hang in there, because next I glued on some wilted grass tufts. Conveniently, this castle is located in a dark, barren land where grass is scarce, especially green grass. When crafting on a low budget, these hemp grass tufts are excellent for taking the eye away from bad spots. Now comes the magic, pigment powders. First I put the brown pigment on, well, almost everything especially on the ground and at the base of the building. I like pigments. They are like washes. They make everything great with little effort. I also got some brown on the doors now. Okay, I tried on the pink pigment near the crystals. It behaves differently. Hmm, not sure. Perhaps it looks like specks of magic dust scattered around, condensed from the crystals. As long as the specks aren't too large, this is actually quite good. I quickly darkened the grass tufts with a wash and then sealed everything. Especially the pigments need to be sealed. A proper sealant can also deepen colors. It's story time! Today, two adventurers of the High Cuts Guard are on a perilous quest of utmost importance. Come on, Bert! This should be the right place! Few men dare this close to the Dark Mage's Tower. Uh, I don't know, Bert. Doesn't look like it's up to the new regulations. Who's that? Oi! You got license for that knife? Since this fateful day, no one heard of Bert and his friend. No more. Well, many lessons have been learned today. Combining the green and black washes with subtle purple areas and the brown pigment resulted in a beautifully colored mage's tower. Colorful, but still dark. That's what I was going for. I hope you have learned something from this build, something that you can do yourself at a low budget. Now let me know what you think in the comments, subscribe if you like the video, and also consider following me on Odyssey, a video platform that I personally prefer. If you want to get your name on the crafting knife or sword and support my work, please check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.